this evening, as we give thanks to God, we begin by singing the first of the hymns in the order of service. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry.
one baptism. Just as in a single human body, there are many limbs and organs, all with different functions. So we who are united with Christ, though many, form one body and belong to one another as its limbs and organs. We have gifts allotted to the church by God's grace. Having um, used those little formal words of opening, it's my privilege to welcome you here for this uh, very significant service. It's a service we're really looking forward to. Uh, it's a service that we're having a, a second go at having. Uh, nobody coughs, please. Uh, but uh, we, we have planned to be here a month or so ago, and uh, just the inevitable happened, and uh, we, we, we had to just go. But, uh, it makes it all the more uh, worth feeling for. And uh, we're sure. delighted to be here to share in this service. I want to say uh, a, a word of thanks to all those who have uh, worked to get ready for this service. Uh, and thanks to, to the rural dean for his part in preparing and uh, for helping us uh, through the vacancy mark. We appreciate all that, that you have given. And I want to say a particular word of welcome to our good chair this evening, Reverend Alan Dormer. Uh, Alan uh, is a former colleague of Arlene's uh, from uh, Monkstown, uh, but uh, I gather maybe no stranger to these parts either, having served in the previous government with us. So it's lovely to have you with us this evening, Alan, and my wife, Polly, and we're glad that you're able to come and uh, open God's word for us. So let's remind ourselves of our purpose this evening. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are here as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him our worship and praise, to hear and receive His holy word, and to pray for His blessing on all who work in His name. Today, we thank God for the ministry and mission of His church in this parish over the years and for those who have shared in it in the time of vacancy. And now we come to welcome Arlen as we commission her to this new ministry. So we rededicate ourselves to the call of God to make disciples, to be witnesses and to be a church that transforms its community. Going to take a moment to pray for our young and invite you just as we stand silently and to hold her in your prayers. and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, 
and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm this evening is psalm number 63. We say this psalm by alternate verse, minister of the people of art. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My God. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than my life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as the power of madness. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you be my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We remain standing for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 9, beginning at verse 35. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As they were walking along the road, the man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens, and the birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who has put a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
having worked in the United Anglican and Baptist Church in Sheffield, that she knew from experience the delicate respect that is needed to work on a local colony partnership. And for that, our are the only In 2010, we started building the extension program. The church had been fundraising for many years, and it's time we started building work. And with great energy, already organized the latest funds from all the organizations that she could think of, and she furnished the new extension. I don't worry about it, I'm coming to the most important part in a moment. In 2011, she organized a community celebration, 400 years celebrating the, the King James Version of the Bible. And our name was Joel, and persuaded to go to the schools, community groups to take part in writing and writing the Gospels, and the project ended with a week of celebration and the display of the Bible, the display of the Bible in its history. Our name has a tremendous energy for community projects and creative way of reaching out. She is brave in her openness, and not many people can get benefit few monks to leave the monastery, join us in the monastery, and then three day, days later, book the monastery's God's gospel group. That was her <laughs> ecumenical day. Our name is liturgically creative and engaged in preaching. She takes discipleship seriously. And in Sheffield, she's part of her creative ministry team where life sheets uh, grew and they developed missional communities. Marnie brings the discipleship part with her to wherever she goes. She's also a hospital chaplain and she lives through here for schools. But most of all, although Marnie is a gifted presbyter, she knows her primary calling is to be an ever learning disciple of Jesus Christ. Her stance as a disciple is to maintain what John Wesley called that single eye on Jesus and on his way, to seek first the kingdom of God. Her intentional part is to follow Jesus. Discipleship is a big movement. As Paul puts it in Philippians chapter 3, I press on, I press on, because there's always a forward momentum. There's always that forward movement, that spiritual dynamic of Christianity. But the problem is for the church, just as it is in life, that we can get stuck. As individual disciples <coughs> and as churches. As well as being a minister, I work as a psychologist three days a week for the church. And I now prefer the term stuck to describe the clients that come my way. They used to use the word broken, even though I was writing an article a year ago, and I used the word broken. And it's in the past year that I've changed so much in my view and understanding of where people get themselves. We all get stuck in mental and emotional and behavioural loops that we find it difficult to get out of. We find that sometimes our minds are so full of concern, worry and rumination that we can't take the steps forward in the direction of what's important to us. And I think this is also a, a, an example of the church. In the church we can get stuck. And we find ourselves that we can't move. Our intention of heart is good, but our intention is often distracted elsewhere. And to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, we need both the intention of heart to follow and also the attention to do the task in the of this time. The three potential disciples in Luke chapter 9, for me, if you like, describe parts of ourselves, parts of our inner being, on the spiritual journey itself. And the first one who came was a volunteer. And he decides that he will fall. But in a sense, he's all talk. And I want you to, to think of, uh, maybe you've heard this illustration before, but there are three uh, frogs on a log. Okay. And one log, one frog, <laughs> jumps the log. Okay, how many, how many frogs are on the log? One, one decides to jump off. How many are on the log? Father's already dead, and the funeral's the next day. 
Or unless he's saying, wait until my father dies, and then if something in the future, I'll fall. Anyway, his attention is elsewhere. His attention is not on the kingdom now present before him. He still could have proclaimed the kingdom and were indeed his intention of heart would shift it up to the culture and to the religious duty above the kingdom. And Jesus says the kingdom is the priority. <coughs> First, the kingdom of God. The third person wants to go back and say goodbye. I mean, it seems these things seem reasonable. But he too is stuck here, <coughs> symbolically stuck in the past. He's going back and not pressing forward one step at a time. And we can all get trapped in the loops of our mind rather than act. We can be trapped in the past or in the future. We can be all what if, what if, what if, and then life's over. We can all get trapped in the stories of failure or even trapped in the stories of success. But we are more than our stories. We are more than our wounds, because we all carry wounds and scars in our story. We are whole in Christ Jesus. And I want you to hear what I'm saying. Hear it in the depths of your being. You are more than your God, and you are more than your scars. But we can get trapped there, and we don't do your new one with Christ. Who you are right now, and I love this, because a lot of methods speak out because they think I'm not being a really spiritual. Who you are right now in this moment is enough. <coughs> right now, who you are is enough. And so we can act from that place. We can also be trapped in the shoes and the rules of culture and religion and not attending to what's in front of us. Whatever's there right now to do and to act. But the good news is this, that every day we have a choice. And every moment we can choose to live in the mind of Christ and to have a kingdom of consciousness, to do what needs to be done and then to press forward. Jesus' metaphor of the plow illustrates this point. Plowing needs complete focus and attention. It's a very precise operation, especially in the rough terrain of the Middle East. If you're not paying attention while you're plowing and you're distracted by the previous plowed ground, you may catch the plow of a rock and break the wooden plank and pull the ox. You could cut into the previous dog furrows, which is a waste of time, or you may just cut aimlessly into the unplowed feet. And these things have serious consequences. Because you could ruin the drainage system, you could damage the water absorption, or you could leave seeds in piles and have seeds exposed to the birds. Plowing needs complete focus and attention in this moment. So we need to do for the whole mind. We focus on the plowing, not on the original cloud. That's not going to do to your past here, are we? I was set up so well. You do it with your whole will. You don't partly consent and partly resent. I mean, there's so many things I think about life. You know, if a poly has to make a cup of tea and I don't want to, you know, you have to drain yourself in from it. It's like that. You have to do it. And you're not doing it with no love or no heart. You're doing it, you're well, you're resenting. But you, we, when we try, anything we do, we do with our all well, our whole well. There's no point in wishing you were somewhere else. You serve in the feet and you find yourself where you are today. And you do it with all your soul. Don't let your imagination be to the daydream. Imagine you're quiet and you're thinking about whatever you think about in your daydreams. Or you're worrying about the future, worrying about what's going to happen next. You have to be here now. You have to be there at that moment. And you put your whole feelings into that plan. You feel your body, you feel your senses in the here and now. Paul, as he does, some, some are so much of this when I'm on the verse of Philippians 3. Forget those things which are behind and reaching towards those things which are before. I press on. I plow on. The past is gone. Good and bad. Whether it's 40 years ago or 4 minutes ago, 
we cannot change it on this reductor here. So let it go. Let it go and press on. Don't look back. Instead, press on. As the late Queen Elizabeth said, we may bow to the past, but we are not bowing to by it. So these three French disciples, they were distracted by the rules of the culture, they were distracted by the future and the past, but Jesus calls us to a new way, a new mind, a new place, and to live in the eternal now of God, to give him and his way our whole life, our whole heart, our whole will, our whole imagination and presence. Don't look back. Keep your hands to the and press on. And this is the moment, this moment is the moment of freedom. Because we can change direction now. We can actually move in the direction of what's important to us. I'm moving in the right direction of my direction of one to the north. Oh, that's worth <laughs> this, this was well. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus experienced the transfiguration. And when he came down from the mountain, it says that he set his face, in the King James it says, he set his face like a flint, or he was resolutely set towards Jerusalem and plowed on. That's what we are called to do. He models it for us. Let go of your histories, let go of your failures and successes. These are just ego evaluations. We don't get us anywhere. We can stay in our lane, but there's something right in front of us in our lane. Let the obligation of love and duty. Instead, let us live by the Spirit of God. And as Paul says, when the fruit of the Spirit is, against such things there is no law of joy, peace, 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 kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Live in one place. Wherever you find yourself, live, put the roots down, and serve and be. Put your hand to the plow and hold on. Focus your attention on and our attention on Jesus. Do everything with a whole heart, here and now. Our name started by remembering some of the things that you, I experienced with you in your last night, and it was always a lesson to me. But the past is gone. The members of this parish, for you, the past is gone. Good and bad, pain and pleasure, all of it. It's just an arm of time. The Lord is here in the Spirit. There's no point in going over the ground and spreading the cloud. Life's too short for that. Do not stand man with a good intention of heart and intention of mind. And glance at the mirror if you have to. Sometimes you have to glance. I mean, we need a word of encouragement. Remember Sunday loved me 10 years ago. And I'm making friends. But the message I just want to share with you in this church tonight is this. Put your hands to the cloud. And keep going because that's all I want. God bless. The temptation to announce that we fought out of the gates and got our heads in massive. <laughs> sadly, the words before us, not sadly, the words before us, for us, as we stand and proclaim our faith, the faith we plow all in, to say together the apostles' faith. Together we affirm our faith, saying, I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered.
and let it be consecrated Lord to thee.
Mr. George, I present the Reverend Arlie Muir to be introduced as priest in charge of the parish of the water and Carrie Castle with all saints. Arlene, as you sense the call of the Holy Spirit on your life to serve as priest in charge of this parish of Kilwater and Cairn Castle with all saints Craigie Hill, do you promise to faithfully serve Christ and his church in this place? With the help of God, I will. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as Arlene prepares to serve as priest in charge of this parish, you are called to support her and serve alongside her in the work of the gospel in this place. When you support her in this ministry, when you uphold her in prayer, when you work with her to build up the kingdom of God, Together we pray. Heavenly Father, we embrace your call for us to make disciples, to be witnesses, to grow leaders, and inspire children and young people. Give us eyes to see your vision, ears to hear the prompting of your spirit, and courage to follow in the footsteps of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Congregation, may be seated. Canon Tiger, have the necessary, necessary declarations been taken and subscribed? They have been made and taken, but not yet subscribed. Church wardens, as representatives of the people of this parish, have you witnessed these declarations? Thank you. I subscribe the foregoing declarations to be licensed as priest in charge in the Diocese of Connor this 18th day of October, 2022. Are you there? Bishop, the decorations remain in constant strife. Thank you, Father. Let us pray. Church of Ireland, to 
preach the word of God, to administer the sacraments, and to perform all other divine offices therein, you having first subscribed the several declarations contained in the rule of subscription as required and prescribed by the Constitution of the Church of Ireland, 2003, Chapter 4. And we do hereby declare that this our license shall remain valid until the 12th day of September 2024, or until it shall be revoked or renewed by us or our successors, subject always to our will and pleasure. And we require that this license be returned to Connor Diocesan Registry for endorsement, renewal, and cancellation three weeks before that date. And we do hereby constitute and admit you the said Reverend Arlene Moore as priest in charge of the parishes aforesaid, given under our hand at the Episcopal See this 13th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2022, and of our consecration, the third. The eagle ear amongst the congregation will have noted the earlier dates, and that's not a mistake. Um, it, it is a case that Arlene has been licensed in this position for a little while, but we're just celebrating it this evening. Arlene. Receive this license to serve in this parish in communion with me in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, strengthen and sustain me in this ministry to which I have been called. Give me the vision of your glory and make me worthy of my call. Amen. Our name, the Lord give you courage, wisdom, strength, and love to do His will. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. I present Arling to you as your priest in charge. Welcome her in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord.
your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Send us to the sick and those who mourn, that we may bring comfort to all in sorrow and light to those who live in darkness. We especially pray for the Martin family circle in their group as they prepare to lay their beloved Jean to rest here in this parish of All Saints Privy Hill on Thursday afternoon. Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done. It is my pleasure to announce that we will be having celebrations of Holy Communion in our parishes on this coming Sunday, 10 o'clock here in All Saints Pretty Hill, and at 11 30 in St. Patrick's, Heron Castle. Everyone is welcome to come here <laughs> if you wish to join us on Sunday. Our next step is number 643. Be my mind, please stand. <laughs>
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Rather than go in peace to love and serve the Lord at this moment, we will all be seated. In the good old days, we would all trip from here to the hall, get the horse wheel and the food, and then when the speeches started, half of us would leave. Myself often included. Sadly, these things have changed over the years, and now we have a couple of brief speeches, and then we get tore into the grub that's been provided. But sadly, not stay. Today's my duty and my delight to welcome our ladies and say thank you for coming here. Over the past number of years of rural day, I've had quite a bit of feelings for this parish. All of them have been joyful for me. I have been delighted to be with people here to get to know them and to know the strength of their faith. And I am even more delighted this time to leave you all from this parish in Arlene's tender and loving care. Look after her, look after her well, as you have looked after others in the past, and she will look after you, as is her wont and her way of doing. It is a blessed union, Arlene, in this parish, and I hope that in years to come it brings forth great results in the pitter-patter of the feet of many Christians worshipping and serving Christ. At this point we have to have a couple of other speeches. It's a bit like a wedding. <laughs> you know how it works. You get the father of the bride says a word, and then the groom says a word, and then others get to speak. So uh, do we have a representative from St. Congles to say a word, a joyous and short word? <laughs> you can speak as long as you want, remember. Okay, that's wrong. He is moving. I have wrote some of um, them. Can I keep this, uh, this brief? Um, uh, thank you to our bishop, um, all the clergy here tonight, and the Reverend Arnie Moore, church members, friends, and valorous of Arnie also. Um, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can believe I can speak for us all tonight when I say we are honored, though we are truly blessed. Through the mercies and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be here tonight. On behalf of, of all at St. Congo's Church in Rathcoon, I take this opportunity to thank our Almighty God, who has given us this wonderful provision in Arnie to share together during this special service and joyous occasion. Now, Arnie was already at St. Congo's when I began attending services regularly. I know that Arnie did help out covering services in the summer of 2016 during the vacancy, and we were looking for part time minister. Unfortunately enough, the bishop at the time, Al Alan Abernathy, proposed Arnie as priest in charge. And from there on, we didn't look back. And I believe I can speak again for us all of the parish of Alcoo, that we are deeply appreciative of Arnie's dedicated service, and even more so her faithful commitment to serving the whole parish and surrounding community. We are truly grateful for her tireless work of prayer and determined effort to seek and find the lost, the path to of the gospel, and the feet of flock, watering and nourishing us, encouraging growth and empowering discipleship. Together, the Reverend Arnie Moore and us in the parish, we achieve an enormous lot, especially through COVID, feeding us the word through online services or over the phone or when allowed, visiting us at our homes, especially the vulnerable and isolated, and creating and providing us with opportunities always to serve the Lord and the parish. On a personal note, um, the Lord used Arlene to give me in my journey of faith and discipleship an infectious encouragement and motivation to keep pressing ahead despite the unforeseeable challenges that always occurred within the years that we walked together to serve Christ and keep some fungos moving forward. You have been forever impacted my life, my soul, and I thank our God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ 
in the power of the Holy Spirit for sending me into your care, nurturing and discipling. And I hope he does this here to the parish. Um, and I was I was once lost and for sin, and I thank Lord Jesus Christ for sending you, his shepherd, to find the likes of me and bring us back into the right relationship with God the Father. So go and make disciples, go and seek the lost and shepherd them to the Lord. Be the sheep and nurture them and disciple them and lead each one in their right relationship with God Almighty. And so on behalf of all of St. Thomas Rockville, we give thanks to Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for blessing all of us this past six years with a minister, a true shepherd, with such a humble servant's heart. And we will miss you, Arne, we will. But we pray for you and we wish you well in your new parish with all of Almighty God's richest blessings in this new stage of your journey serving in Christ Jesus' precious name. And on behalf of the parish of Rathfield, we ask you, the parish of Kilwater and St. Patrick's, Burn Castle, all saints, with all saints pray be held, to look after Arne and provide all that this Lord's disciple needs to guide this parish, to go where the Lord leads, and also pray for Arne continually, please, without ceasing, so that Almighty God can fill Arne with much needed wisdom and knowledge, so that this parish will achieve all that the Lord has set before you from even when you first began. So let us give thanks to you, O God Almighty, and the Lord Jesus Christ for the ministry of the Reverend Arne Muir. So may the Lord bless you, Arne, and in all you do, and in the power of His Spirit, in His name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
the end of the month. It's only right and proper that I thank my family, especially my dad and my sister Emily. No minister, and if you ask any of these clergy present tonight, they will tell you the same, but no minister can function well without the love, help, and support of their family. And I've had more than my fair share of their love, help, and support. Truly, I do thank them for being there for me through all the ups and downs and for all the sacrifices that they have made to enable me to be the person and the minister that I am today. Bishop Mark Stephen Dundas and indeed the other <coughs> Mark Stevens who have been in contact with me, also Mark Stephen McBride and Mark Stephen <coughs> Mark Ford. Thank you for your trust in me and for the part you have played in not only overseeing this service but rearranging it so promptly despite your busy schedules after it had to be cancelled at short notice. Who would have thought, certainly not I, that I managed to work all the way through the pandemic, do COVID funerals, meet with COVID patients in hospitals and so forth, <laughs> and carry out all my responsibilities only to succumb to the virus the day before the service was meant to happen in the new parishes. So I do thank everyone all for their willingness to so promptly rearrange this service. I'm also, of course, a debt to the one and only Canon Mark Taylor, a uh, rural dean, and uh, to the registrar of the Reverend by the Retired. And indeed, please pass on, push up to your secretary, Lorraine Google, and my thanks as well for all her administration behind the scenes to make sure all the things happened and were in the right place at the right time for this service to take place. I thank Dean John Beaumont, the diocesan curate, and all the clergy and lay leaders who have provided pastoral care and conducted public worship during the legacy. And not least, Reverend Harold Sharp, who himself was formerly serving here in the parishes himself. My good friend and colleague, Reverend Alan Mortimer, I have great pleasure in asking you to come and speak to us tonight. And I know that that word I will treasure. And I'll probably get a copy of them afterwards as well, so that I don't forget uh, the message. I really do thank him for bringing God's word to us tonight. And I mean, he doesn't realize that as we preach to the play, I'm sitting looking straight in front of me, listening to what he was saying, uh, but also looking in front of me. Jennifer for managing all the invitations and the changing replies of 
whether we could, could come from printing up the numbers and trying to work out where would be best to hold the service. I am sorry we couldn't have it in the beautiful church at Eastern Patrick's, but numbers you to made would testify that just wasn't possible. And that brings me to all of you who so willingly and enthusiastically said yes. Your presence here tonight means so, so much to me, and I really mean that, each and every one of you. The fact that you have given up your precious time, your precious evening, in order to connect with me, to reconnect with me, to meet me for the first time, to pray and worship together and share in my joy tonight is priceless. Some of you I know have traveled some distance to be here, and for that I am also touched and deeply grateful. And I know that you therefore will be late home tonight, and so I will be praying that we have journey of mercies, as they say. The prize for the furthest tonight, I'm not quite sure who wins it, uh, but they will have it for a short period of time. You can tell me after the service when we're enjoying the catering who has come the furthest. Um, but certainly, in the long run, we may have to give that prize up because I know why relations in Australia and Canada were looking forward to sharing our service with the view online. <coughs> it will be uploaded onto various parish websites and Facebook pages, and so if you wish to view it again, please do so. We'll make sure that information comes to you. And so, I really just want to um, say thank you for coming, each and every one of you. I know many of you have sent me text messages, emails, I know my phone is pinging all day, um, and certainly many of you have called with me in person or rung me up and um, offered your good wishes and assured me of your love and prayers. I know a few of you have given me presents and cards and I'm deeply humbled by that. And I do thank you sincerely for your kindness and generosity. I'm really blessed by the love that they represent. And it's really so lovely to see, as I look down upon you, so many people from all sorts of areas and eras of my life. It really, really is. Um, you know, some people describe it a bit as an archaeological date, and that's not any reflection on anybody's age. But as we look back over the years, and I look back over the years of my life, I can certainly see people representing different places and different times. Um, all sorts of memories and experiences that we've had together come to mind. And the one thing that I really, really do love is that tonight we have people here from every denomination. Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, Roman Catholic, and Church of Ireland, and I'm sure a few others as well, from all the independent churches. And I really, really think that's special. The Lord himself says when people come together in unity, there he bestows a blessing. And so I really do believe you are blessed tonight for that reason. And I will look forward to catching up with you um, in, the, in a moment. Um, but I have promised the people of All Saints and St. Patrick's that I will share a little bit of my faith story. Um, they've known me for a few weeks now, um, but I've held back. Um, and so a little hint is that if you come on Sunday, you might hear all the stories that you want to hear, <laughs> at least at the beginning. And so, I've enjoyed getting to know you. I have been praying for you for some time. I have been praying with you for a few weeks. And I do hope and pray that we will continue to serve the Lord in this place and that you will continue to be happy with this new minister and this woman. Now, I'm very happy also because I believe this is the first time you've had a woman. And so I really do thank you for taking that risk. I can't promise to be always the one who will please you. I am human. I will make mistakes. And I do ask in advance your forgiveness for any way in which I do um, not get it right. It will take me a while to learn all your names. And it will certainly take me a while to be molded into the shape of Craigie Hill of the Castle. But I will always do my utmost to be one thing, and this I promise you, to the best of my ability, I will, as Alan has told us tonight in the sermon, I will strive to keep our attention on Jesus. You can't see it, but during the daytime, as you go out of this church, 
you will see a cross in the stained glass window behind you. And that is always my aim as I go down in the congregation, is to keep the cross before me. And I need to try and point you to Jesus, who's the one we all try to follow. And so I just want to end by doing that just now, to focus our attention once more upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. To thank the Lord together for his grace, his mercy and his goodness, as we invite his blessing on our continued fellowship and on the food that has been so lovingly prepared for us. And as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, celebrate always, pray constantly, and give thanks to God no matter what circumstances you find yourself in. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. So let us pray. O oh, gracious God, we thank you for your overflowing generosity to us. Thank you for our homes, families, and friends, especially for the presence of those gathered here tonight. Open our hearts to receive and share your love as we invite your blessing upon the food that we will enjoy, and the hands that prepared, and those that will serve it. And all we have worked hard to make tonight the special occasion that it has been. For food in the world where many walk with hunger, for faith in the world where many walk with fear, and for friends in the world where many walk alone, Lord, we give you thanks. And so let us join together in saying the grace as we finish. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. Before the protest, if someone were not able to go down the steps, they could wait here and they could go right here and pass down into the hall. All right, Aaron? There's almost a number of people who are going to find someone who doesn't bring them in. <laughs> <laughs> a reminder to us all, in the theme of the wedding we've just been involved with, you are the bridesmaids and the groomsmen. <laughs> Your role in the days and weeks to come is to continue to support Arlene and her work, to pray for her, and to hold her deeply and dearly in your thoughts. We now have our final music as we all process out. Go out to the door, around the corner, around the corner, holds out like food. <laughs> the smells 